In this video, we're gonna talk about the five reasons or the five different ways that relationships keep failing. So there are a few phases that you may have going into a relationship. So one would be not even being able to get the first date. The second would be maybe she's gone out with you once or twice. The third one is maybe she's seen you for about a month and she doesn't want to keep going into a commitment. The fourth one would be she doesn't want to be engaged to you. And the fifth one is you have a failing marriage. So if you watch this whole video, make sure you watch all the points because if you miss any one of these, you're gonna leave yourself open to falling back into your old patterns. My name is Ed Baxter and I help guys in betrayal situations. I've coached thousands of men. Tens of thousands of men have come through my doors in one form or another. I've had over 3,000 guys come through the Betray to Badass program. And that's what we do. We'll get you to that place where you make the right decision for you and your children. And the first thing we wanna talk about here in the reason why relations fail is the inability to tell the truth. To tell the truth about yourself, tell the truth about how she's acting, and glossing over all kinds of things and red flags and just hoping that it'll work out later on. Most guys get in this situation where when they're in a relationship or there's a woman that they wanna date, they'll gloss over any kind of red flags because she's the only one who is available to him to date. Can I make this relationship work? Because he doesn't have a lot of options. So he's gotta make what he has work. And so because of this, he doesn't tell the truth about himself, the fact that he can't actually pull good women, and he doesn't tell the truth about the woman that's in front of him because he sees all these red flags and glosses all over this, and so he gets himself into a situation later on that could have been prevented prior had he stood up for himself, had he looked up for himself in his own value. You can ignore reality, but you can't ignore the consequences of ignoring reality, and when you do this, you put, you put on the back burner all the red flags, you can guarantee it's gonna get worse over time. And because of this, guys have what I would call unrealistic expectations. This means that you hope this woman is different than she actually is. Most people don't fall in love with somebody. They fall in love with the idea of who that person could be. In other words, they romanticize who this person is and then they fall in love with that person. They're not actually looking at the data in front of them. When she says, hey, I need space, he's thinking, oh, I've got an independent woman, not actually looking at the fact that she needs space from him because he's smothering her all the time. And this whole game of unrealistic expectations is, I want a woman who is way up here on this bar, and he doesn't look at the human person behind what it is he wants. And so a guy will go after things like a woman with great beauty, ignoring the fact that she's a mess in every other area of her life. She can't clean her house. You open the car door and like all this clothing and stuff just falls out, and just garbage. It's like you're not actually looking at the person in front of you. You've got this unrealistic expectation of who you hope she'll be. And because of this, you get yourself trapped up into a fantasy. And so whenever you find out later on that the woman isn't that compatible with you, you're like, well, so she wasn't always like this way. And it's like, yes, she was. You just chose not to see it because you had the rose colored glasses on. You just had this woman who was finally giving you attention and she's probably hotter than the last one. You just glossed over all the problems. And because you were with this woman that you didn't really want to look at, you didn't want to tell the truth of who she actually was, and you had unrealistic expectations for who you think she could be, you end up getting in this place where you can't even be who you want to be, and she has to be who you think she should be. If you want a woman that is somebody who's highly compatible with you, and somebody who really matches you well, you're not going to be looking down on her. But a lot of guys will get with a woman who, who they look down on because if she's fucking up everywhere, he doesn't have to look at himself. He can just focus on all her problems and he doesn't have to look at his own problems. And so you have unrealistic expectations of what your relationship should be. And what ends up happening is you gloss over all the fundamental compatibility issues. Incompatibility is one of the key determining factors if your relationship is going to work or not. Most people never look at the game of compatibility. They're always looking at like, hey, does this person look good? and do we have chemistry? But that's only the first two levels of compatibility. First one is attraction. Are you attracted to this person? Do you like the way they look? Do you like the way they act? Do you like the way they smell? The second one is chemistry. Do you get along well? Can you get along well and have good conversation? The third one is, do you have common interests? Do you have common interests? Do you have things in common? The fourth one is, do you have common values? Like, what do you value in your life? The fifth one is common goals. Do you have the right goal, the same goals in life, right? Do you want to have kids together? Do you want to have, like, how are you going to retire? Are you going to retire? Are you going to run a business? Do you know, or do you have these common goals and values in your life? And then the last one is trauma. Can you manage this person's trauma effectively? And can they manage your trauma effectively? Most people never even get past levels one and two. And that's why most relations fall apart. Because whenever any of these other things come up, they're all these point of contentions because you're just not that compatible. And in every relationship, trauma issues are always gonna come up and will unravel the relationship. 
And so you being with a woman who's always going to have trauma, and you being traumatized by whatever traumatized you in your life, and then you realize that you end up bringing out the worst of each other when these traumas come into the picture, well, there you go. You're never going to be able to come to a conclusion. So we don't even have, need to have conversations about lack of communication. Most relationships don't have lack of communication problems. They have trauma problems and incompatibility. They have this because they haven't been willing to tell the truth and be vulnerable about themselves. Look, we've all had bad things happen to us in our life. Vulnerability is the key thing, right? If something happens to you in your life, if you're feeling a certain way, your ability to express that and be vulnerable and allow the other person to either accept or reject it is key. But if you're not willing to tell the truth about yourself, like we talked about in point number one, you'll never get to this point of realizing where you need to be vulnerable. If I'm telling somebody how I'm feeling about something, I don't feel vulnerable. I'm very secure in who I am, and this is just how it is. This is what's going on within me. Your opinion of how I feel doesn't matter, doesn't change the fact of how I look at myself and my own value as a human. But most people don't want to be vulnerable because they're so afraid of being judged because they're very insecure with who they are. They haven't made peace with who they are. They haven't made peace with their traumas and history and the things that they've been doing the mistakes that they've made. But your ability to just express clearly and openly what's going on with you from the heart and logically is absolutely key. Like I was saying in the last point, communication usually isn't a problem with relationships. It's the fact that they're not willing to be vulnerable with what's really going on because they're too afraid to express themselves and compatibility. These two things fuck up every relationship. Mainly because they're not willing to actually work on it. Once they get to this point where they can be vulnerable, nobody really wants to work on themselves. Why? It's hard. You have to go into the pit. You have to go into the deep, darkest places of your soul and start rooting that out. You have to learn radical acceptance and vulnerability of yourself for yourself. You have to admit to yourself where you're going wrong. You have to admit to yourself where you're failing in your life. If you're not willing to do this, you're never going to have a good relationship. Because if you can't get clear on who you are and vulnerable with yourself, you're never going to be able to do it with a partner. And so vulnerability is absolutely critical. But even if you're vulnerable, the last problem that most relationships fail from is lack of personal self-growth. It doesn't matter what you do in your relationship when it comes to trying to save it. If one of you isn't willing to be vulnerable, if one of you isn't willing to look at the hard facts of the compatibility, if one of you isn't really looking to express themselves and tell the actual truth, and one of you isn't dealing with your realistic expectations, then it doesn't matter what happens. It's always going to fall apart because you don't have this key fundamental one, which is personal self-growth. Your ability to dive in deep into your own psychology, into your own traumas, and root them out. Why? Because the more that you do that for yourself, the more you're going to be able to be present for the other person. The less you're going to be judgmental when they're having a problem. The less your traumas are going to spin the entire relationship out of control. And the less that you're going to get triggered when she loses her shit. If you are lacking in your own personal self-growth and your own responsibility for how you are and how you feel on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, it doesn't matter what relationship you get in. The woman's not going to fix the problem because you're the problem. And so when you can realize this, when you can realize that you're always the common denominator in all the relationship problems, then that means you can take control of it and not be a victim of happenstance. You can actually take control of it and then make those changes necessary to get yourself in the place that you need to be. And if you want to know why you're struggling in your relationship and you want a video on how to actually get over these struggles, go ahead and watch this video right here. And if you like this one, hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more about this. If you like this video and you want to give back to this channel, definitely hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.